Westwood, Los Angeles, California, home to some of the richest people in the world, also home to broke university students. Westwood is a neighborhood in the city of Los Angeles next to Beverly Hills, about 20 minutes away from the beach. So let's discover this beautiful, interesting neighborhood. Let's talk real estate, history, prices, who lives here, why the heck are people moving here? We'll talk about the most expensive real estate in Westwood, which hint, happens to be underground, all of this and a bunch of other fun stuff coming up. And let's start with a little bit of history. The first major attempt to develop Westwood was around the 1880s in what would have been a town called Sunset. They started by developing a, a cemetery and that's, that's pretty much as far as they got before they went bankrupt. Looking back, maybe breaking ground on a new development catering to dead people was probably not the best idea. Although to their benefit, the cemetery still exists today and it's home to one of the highest concentration of celebrities in the world, uh, dead ones, including Marilyn Monroe and the Playboy man, Hugh Hefner. In 2020, a burial plot in this cemetery was listed for $745,000, which per square foot would make it by far the most expensive real estate in Westwood by like over a thousand percent. But anyway, then around the 1920s, the Jans Investment Corporation came in and was pretty much like, ah, here's an idea. Let's start developing stuff for living people. And so some of their earliest homes in Westwood above ground were built around 1924, starting south of Wilshire Boulevard and moving up. Then around 1925, UCLA announced that they would be moving into the neighborhood. And this was a major boost to the growth of Westwood. It led to the development of Westwood Village and the high-end residential communities surrounding it. Most of the development in Westwood happened between 1930 and 1940 and was in intended for upper middle class and, well, rich people. At the time, it was a hub of intellectual and financial wealth and fast forward to today and not much has changed. And now for a shameless interruption to let you know that this video is sponsored by myself, Daniel Rango, real estate agent in Los Angeles. If you're looking to buy or sell, don't hesitate to reach out. But more importantly, if you like this video, make sure to hit like or subscribe to get more Los Angeles real estate related videos. And sorry about that. But anyway, so who lives in Westwood? About 50,000 people. But if we have fun with it and we make Westwood a living person and call him Patrick, Patrick is, uh, he's older, he's an intellectual, prefers to wear jeans, maybe a lawyer, maybe a doctor. I mean, compared to Venice Beach, he's, uh, he's traditional. But like 1969, I was a hippie when I was young, but chose money instead type of traditional. Now, Patrick also has kids and they also represent Westwood. There's Michael who tucks his shirt in only so you can see his Gucci belt buckle. There's Maria who looks like she just got out of bed, but only because she prefers to shop for books then makeup. And then of course, there's the youngest, Tony lives in the moment, find me at Habibi's three in the morning, but somehow still manages to get things done. Westwood is like a beautiful, diverse family. So why are people moving to Westwood? Well, if you live in Westwood, you have access to great elementary schools. Westwood is also included in, well, a bunch of lists for being one of the safest neighborhoods in Los Angeles. You're also surrounded by some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in LA, including uh, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, and Brentwood. You're typically also moving to Westwood if you're looking for bigger houses, more land, or more traditional architecture. You're not really gonna find too much contemporary big glass architecture like, like you may find in neighborhoods like uh, West Hollywood or the Hollywood Hills. But now for the fun stuff, let's talk real estate. The median price for a single family house in Westwood is about $3.3 million, an increase of about 120% in the past 10 years, which is great, but honestly, not among the highest increases in Los Angeles. I mean, some neighborhoods in Los Angeles have have hit well over 200% during the same period. But here's the thing, Westwood is a well-established high-end neighborhood. It's, it's been like this since like, well, forever. It's not, it's not really an up and coming neighborhood and that also comes with benefits. For example, during the Great Recession of 2008, from peak to bottom, when some parts of Los Angeles dropped in value by like over 50%, in Westwood, property values went down by like 13%, which 
contextually is like nothing. So while you're not going to get crazy returns in Westwood, you're also not gonna lose a bunch of money. Now, in the past 20 years, it has gone up in value by about 285%. So yes, the longer you hold, the better you are. The median price for a condo is about $1 million, an increase of about 98% in the past 10 years, which does reflect the recent comeback for condos after being hit pretty hard during the pandemic. And now let's talk about the different neighborhoods or areas within Westwood. Now there's a bunch of different pockets in Westwood, but for this video, we're only gonna cover three. One, the most expensive, two, my favorite, and three, the best bang for your buck. But before we do that, let's check out some popular hangout spots. Number one, Westwood Village. Now, historically, Westwood Village has seen better days. For a moment, it was kind of suffering from an identity crisis split between the, the needs of the broke university students and the needs of the wealthy residents. But things are definitely getting better. Cool new coffee shops are moving into the neighborhood. More community events are embracing the village and new types of fun businesses are moving in like Center One, an indoor rock climbing place expected to open later this year. Then you got Persian Square, south of Wilshire Boulevard, a commercial district with cafes, shopping, and of course, some of the best Persian food in town. And if you're looking for the best breakfast in town, make sure to stop by Mary and Rob's Cafe, a historical staple in the community that has an amazing breakfast burrito. Also, because Westwood is so conveniently located, you also benefit from the offerings of the surrounding neighborhoods, like the Century City Mall in Century City, Rodale Drive in Beverly, Hills, Japantown in West LA, and San Vicente Boulevard in Brentwood, all of which are just like minutes away. And now let's talk neighborhoods or the different pockets within Westwood. Number one, the most expensive area by far is Homby Hills, located on the northeast part of Westwood. Now, along with its neighbors, Bel Air and Beverly Hills, Homby Hills is part of what is called the Platinum Triangle. Together, these three neighborhoods make up some of the most expensive real estate in the world. The median price in Homby Hills is about $40 million, with a low of about $26 million and a high of about $100 and 20 million dollars to which you might be asking why why so much money and well after neighborhood one of the, the major elements of ultra expensive real estate is is land. While the typical lot size in Los Angeles may be around like 5,000 square feet in Homby Hills it's more like 50,000 square feet that's like 10 times your typical lot size. Now, naturally, this also means more space for bigger houses. And while the typical house size on, on the west side of Los Angeles may be around uh, 2,400 square feet, in Homby Hills, it's more like 24,000 square feet, to which you're now like, but I can't even see these houses. All I see is a bunch of leaves and hedges. Exactly. One reason people move to Homby Hills is privacy. From the outside, you see nothing. Inside, everything happens. Homby Hills is where Hugh Hefner threw some of the most ridiculous parties at the Playboy Mansion. And interesting fact, the Playboy Mansion was originally the house of the family that founded Westwood and is also known as the Arthur Letts Jr. Estate, built around 1927. Another interesting thing, many of the homes in this very expensive, ultra expensive neighborhood were built during the 1930s, like during the Great Depression. So it's starting to seem like recessions don't even exist in Westwood. And still in the category of most expensive, we have to mention when it comes to condos, you've got the Wilshire Corridor, or as they used to call it, the Platinum Mile, where you're gonna find the highest concentration of luxury condos in Los Angeles. The medium price for a condo here is about $1.1 million with a high of over $20 million. HOA fees here are also some of the highest, typically around $2,000 a month. And while while many condos here are older, being built around the 70s and 80s, they still demand high prices. One reason because of their historical place in Los Angeles glamour and luxury. I mean, there's one building here, the, the Wilshire Terrace built in 1958, that's so exclusive, the only way to buy it is cash, but even if you have the cash, you still need board approval. There's a screening process, which may include a background check, references, and actually proving that you're actually rich. Next 
Next up, my favorite neighborhood, Little Homby. It's, it's right next to Homby Hills, and as the name intuitively implies, it's kind of like Homby Hills' younger, more affordable brother. The median price for a house here is a little bit more humane at around $4.8 million. And unlike other neighborhoods in Los Angeles that have been transformed over the years from low end to high end, this neighborhood has always been high. That's kind of the way it was originally planned. And a couple of ways that you can tell this without necessarily having to know the history of a neighborhood, one, the amount of trees. Most trees in Los Angeles are not native to Los Angeles, so trees usually means money. Number two, telephone poles. Unlike the, the area south of Wilshire and a bunch of other neighborhoods in Los Angeles, you're not really gonna see telephone poles right outside your bedroom window. They were buried underground to visually protect the landscape. Number three, curvilinear street. You're gonna notice that the streets here are just like a maze of curves. The intention was to embrace and appreciate the lines of the hilly terrain. And as a byproduct, you're not really gonna have cars speeding up and down the street cause that would be bad for them mostly. But anyway, some other things that distinguished Little Homie is the preservation of its original architecture, mostly period revival architecture in the style of uh, American colonial, Spanish, among other traditional styles. You're not really gonna find a lot of contemporary architecture here, and if you try to change that, your neighbors are, are probably gonna hate you. Buying a house in Little Homie is about embracing its history and its architecture. That's why you're also not really gonna find a whole lot of new construction. And there really isn't a need to tear down and build bigger houses like is the case in neighborhoods that were originally planned as lower end. The typical house size here is about 4,300 square feet on an 11,000 square foot lot, which is about double the typical size. Now, if you're looking for new construction or more contemporary architecture in Westwood, you're gonna find a little bit more options south of Wilshire Boulevard where houses were originally smaller, intended for less rich people, and for this reason, no one seems to care about knocking them down. Kind of messed up, but also kind of the way it works. And that brings us to our third and final neighborhood, the best bang for your buck, the area south of Wilshire Boulevard between Beverly Glen and Westwood Boulevard. The median price here is more affordable at around $2.7 million. Houses are typically smaller at around 2,800 square feet with lot sizes around 6,600 square feet. Now, at the time of construction in the 1920s, 1930s, by Westwood standards, this was affordable middle-class housing. By Los Angeles standards, this was still higher middle class, and by today's standards, this is still expensive real estate. I mean, if you can buy a house here, you should be proud of yourself. I mean, financially, that's still gotta put you in, what, top three to 5% of the US population? Great job. But anyway, if you're looking for newer construction in Westwood, you're more likely to find it here where 2,000 square foot houses are being knocked down and replaced with like 4,000 square foot McMansions and in the process, pushing property values up. And I would say this is like a recent trend starting maybe in the past six to seven years and hate it or love it as more of this happens, I think the section of Westwood is going to dramatically change and see big price increases. In a way, this is kind of like your up and coming neighborhood within Westwood. So it's like the best of both worlds, a well-established area with good appreciation potential. So in summary, if you're looking for a big house on a big lot, you got a bunch of money, you want privacy, or you just wanna be able to scream and shout and not be heard, Homeby Hills could be the place for you. Now, if you're looking for a nice, quiet street, tree-lined with traditional style houses like in the movies, and still a big house and still a big lot, but not at a ridiculous price, then Little Homeby could be the place for you. If you want high-rise luxury, be part of Los Angeles glamour history, then you got the Wilshire Corridor. And finally, if you're looking for growth potential, but still in a safe, well-established, up-and-coming, very convenient neighborhood, then you belong south of Wilshire Boulevard. And by the way, my name is Daniel Rangel, real estate agent in Los Angeles. If you're looking to buy or sell, if I can be of any help, it would be an honor. And if you like this video, make sure to hit like or subscribe to get more Los Angeles real estate related videos, including more neighborhood tours.